Perfect. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. Um, I'm excited to talk to you today about Creator Plus within Brightspace and how this can be used within your secondary school classes. So before we dive in too much, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Bridget Connolly. I am um, the manager of the global success team here at D2L. Prior to joining D2L, I was a secondary school teacher in Ontario, where I live. Um, I taught English and family studies and then joined D2L about three years ago. So our agenda today, I have an agenda, but really I want today to be kind of fluid. I want to give you some time to workshop with this, play with Creator Plus. If you haven't done so yet, there's a lot of tools within there and it can take learning to, to figure out how to use them. So I definitely want to bake some of that time into today. So I'm going to first talk about what Creator Plus is, some of the tools within Creator Plus. We'll go through a demo and a workshop, and then I'll leave you with lots of resources as well. Um, and I do just want to reiterate, this session here is for secondary teachers. There's one right after this for elementary. So if you wanted to just join a secondary or uh, sorry, join a Creator Plus session, and this is the one you joined, but you're an elementary teacher, there's one focused on elementary after as well. So before we get into what Creator Plus is and the tools of it all, I wanted to put this in here as just some best practices to be aware of, because this is often a question that comes up. And I will show you how to do this once we get into our course. But if you need to copy items within Creator Plus from one course to another, Currently, the best practice of how to do that um, is different for elements and for practices. And again, I will show you how you can do both of these things. But to copy elements, you can copy the source code from one course to another using your HTML documents source code. And I will show you what that looks like. It sounds a lot more technical than it is. It's really just copying and pasting into one course. Um, to copy practices, you can use import export copy components to bring in um, another course and bring in those course files. And again, I'll show you what that looks like as well. Just wanted to put this slide in here for reference in case you're taking a look at these later and have this question. If you are copying pictures, the best practice right now is to copy the actual image with the HTML file. High level what Creator Plus is, if you haven't had a chance to play with it yet or get into your course with it yet, it is a powerful integrated um, tool within Brightspace that the goal of it is that anyone can be a creator. So if you don't have a graphic design background or don't have learning creative services, you can use some fun things within your courses to make the um, learning fun and engaging for your students. There's some interactive elements which allows for some gamification for students as they're working through the Creator Plus work. You can insert some videos and reimagine learning with those. And you can also speed up the creation process while building your skills and bring these over year over year. So hopefully if you're teaching the same course multiple years, you just have to create this one time, edit it if you ever need to, um, but you don't have to start from scratch and rebuild all the time. With Creator Plus, there's two elements to this. So as I mentioned before, there's practices and elements. Um, so practices are, those things that enhance comprehension, keep learners engaged, and they're, they're practice type thing, as the name implies. So they are not a quiz. They do not go to the grade book, but they have that same kind of element of allowing students to try out the work. There's different question types for them to play with to see how they're doing, and they can try again if they haven't been successful. Elements are a little bit different. These are more of content focused, so students can interact with them, but not in the same way as practicing or checking their material, but they can interact with it in the way that there's click and reveals, accordions to come down, flip cards. This is really just about making your content stand out. So to dive into that a little bit more, practices um, are meant to ensure that important concepts are grasped and keep learners excited with a wide variety of tools in the practice tools. So these are the question types that come with practices. You have fill in the blanks, multi-select, multiple choice, sequencing, sorting, and true and false. And we'll, we'll demonstrate what some of these look like today. As I mentioned, I really want to take some time today. I'll show you what some examples of this look like. And then I will show you how to create a practice. You can create one on your own, create as many as you would like. We'll come back, we'll do elements and do the same thing. So since there are so many different types of um, practices and elements that you can use. I really want to give you some time today to try these out in your actual courses. 
Elements, on the other hand, um, is the space where you can create delightful content by inserting flexible and user-friendly interactive elements into your courses, as I mentioned, without needing any coding skills. Um, I find this quite easy to use, and I come from an English teaching background, so I have no coding skills, but I, I can figure this stuff out. So the tools that we have in here are accordions, tabs, click and reveal, call out boxes, timeline, stylized quote, and flip cards. Again, I'll demonstrate one of these today, and then you can have some time to play in your course and create some of these for your own courses. I'm not going to click on these today. I just wanted to record some quick videos of some examples here in case you wanted to revisit these at a later time, knowing that you're getting the slide deck here. Um, if you don't want to rewatch the entire recording, you just have two minutes and you want to see an example, I just created some quick little videos there for you. I also wanted to talk about using Creator Plus in the classroom. So yes, it can be used in a remote learning environment or if you're teaching online, Brightspace works really well, but you can also do it in the classroom. Some ways that we've seen Creator Plus working well right now is for practice for tests and having students review information to prepare. So using that practices, have students just go through the material, see how they're doing, do some self-check before the test is coming up. Also, it can be an activity for the class to do together at the beginning of the day. I've seen this one work really well. Some teachers have presented it up on the board and had the class work through it together. So if it's a timeline or, or sorry, a sequencing, they have to work together to figure out where the items should be as kind of a minds on activity to get the day going. It also works really well for those who have finished a test early um, and have some work to complete. So there's always that time. There's some students who will take 10 minutes to finish a test and some students will take 70 minutes to finish a test. And there's that chunk of time that you're not sure what to do with. And so you can have something like this, have the practices in there, have the elements in there for students to work through. And I just added a little tip in there that if you are, if they are completing a quiz within Brightspace, you can have the release condition set that this will automatically release to them so that they can use this right when the quiz is completed. If it's an in-person quiz and they have it on paper, can also just go to the material after. Okay, so with that, I'm going to jump to our course. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm going to start first just by showing you some examples of elements. I'll show you how to create an element, give everybody some time to go do that on their own. We'll come back together, do the same with practices. So here I'm going to just show you some 7 to 12 examples of how this has worked in the past. This is our example of an accordion. So one example of an accordion here, I'm just making this full screen. So you can see that it's just typical HTML text here. We've got our content built out and then we've got the accordion to drop down some different pieces of information here for students. They can collapse it if they need to as they're working through and can um, put in whatever content you would like into here. So we've got a little chart within here, but you could put in videos, pictures, just text, whatever you need in there. It works the same as typical HTML content. It's just in a smaller little box here. Another option here, I'm going to show you two different timelines. So the timeline function is the same for both. I'm just going to show you two different ones that are built out. So this is one that's a bit more simplistic. It's just got the text here and it's going on cascading sides. So students can scroll through and see the timeline here. And just like we saw with the accordions, they could have text above it, videos, images, whatever, or you could just have it as a standalone element there. Another example of a timeline, this one's a bit more built out. So just to show you another example of how this has worked, this one has some more text within it, as well as some quick links to items either in Brightspace that you need to direct them to or outside of Brightspace. You can link to anything. So just putting in little links for students to click on to go to um, additional material there. So students can scroll through and see their timeline and um, the context of the lesson that they're learning. And then the last element I'm just going to show the example of here is um, another accordion just with a bit more text built out here. So this one's all about qualitative, quantitative data, and the students can click through here. So again, those examples I think are good to show, but a lot of this really comes from how it will work for you in practice. Um, I'm going to 
show an example of creating one of these. So I'm, if you need to create a new item, to do so, you go to create new. So go to the unit in your course that you would like to be creating the item in, create new, HTML document. And just like creating typical piece of content or um, HTML document here, you can add your text. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna title this one elements. We have our content here. So just like you were to build out other pieces of content, you can add in a template if that's something that you use or just add in your text here. You can add your due dates or your start and end dates if that's something that you would like to do as well. So again, just like a regular piece of content. I'm going to expand this so we have the full screen to see here. If you haven't found Creator Plus in here yet, um, it is a little bit hidden. So it's this plus button here. So we have the other insert options is where Creator Plus can be found. So um, this one up here, and if I click on this, I can see I've got my insert element as well as insert practice here. Um, and I do have screenshots at the end of the slide deck as well of a walkthrough of how you can um, find this. So if you're doing this later and you forget where it is, it's in the little plus button, insert practice, insert element. So we're gonna start with an element here. I'm just gonna go to insert element my options will pop up. So again, those ones that I mentioned earlier of accordion, tabs, click and reveal, call out, timeline, stylized quote, and flip cards. I'm going to show the example of a flip card, but again, when we give some time for you to do this on your own, create whatever ones make sense for your actual lesson. I hope that this is something that you can um, use in your courses. So take some time and build out something that makes sense for you. I'm going to go to flip card here. And then the item um, options come up here. So the first thing I'll need to do is add in my learner instructions. It's going to default to select each item to learn more. I could leave that the way that it is or change the instructions. This lesson's gonna be about frogs. So I'm just gonna add about frogs there. So you could make the instructions whatever you need them to be. If you're going through this later and you have some questions, we have little question marks here to guide you along the way. Um, and I know Darren's always happy to answer questions as well if you're doing this later on your own and have some questions. And then we have our flip cards down here. So it's gonna default to just have one flip card. You can have one up to many flip cards. So I'm going to add, add an item there. Can add up to four items per line. You can see that it changes the sizes of the flip cards. It makes them a little bit smaller, but you can always add additional rows. So if I did need a lot in here, I could really add as many as I need to there. So I think you, you get the idea. I don't need to keep adding the rows, but you could add as many flip cards as you need for your lesson there. And if you ever don't need any, you can just delete them um, easily like that as well. So I'm gonna keep it to just the two today. Um, just to show the example of how this works. So we've got our two flip cards here. The first thing I need to do is fill out the text on the front. Um, and you could start with the back as, if you'd like. They're both the same, the content to fill out. So it's up to you if you want a lot of content to put on the front or a lot of content to put on the back or both. However you choose to do that is up to you. I'm just going to add the title here of add poll. Um, I can add an image. So if you'd like to insert a picture, you can do so if you have images on your computer that you'd like to bring in or something within Brightspace. So I'm just going to bring in that tadpole picture that I have. And then I can add some alternative text for my students who might benefit from this. If students are using a screen reader, it's important to add the alternative text there. So I'm just going to add tadpole. Um, I could add some more details there. If you ever do just have a decorative image, you can always just check off that the image is decorative and it will um, not have any text there for students, screen readers to detect. I can save that image there. Tells me that that's complete and I can close that. So now I can see a small picture of my image there and then I can add in some content. So again, based on how you would like to do this, you can keep the front really small or really robust and then keep the back smaller, however you choose to do it. I'm not gonna add any content in there. I'm just gonna have the title and the picture. And then on the back, I'm gonna skip the title and the image and just add some content here. So a tag. 
and I could add some text about what a tadpole is for my students to learn about, could link into different items if I would like to as well. And then over here, I, again, on my front for my second book card, I can add an image. This time I'm going to bring in one of a frog. Can add in my alternative text again. And then my content in the back of the card as well. So I can say. Um, and then the most important part, once you're done building out your elements. So this is one thing that differs from the elements to the practices right now. The way to actually insert the element is to go to preview here. You'll get an image of what this looks like. So I can see a preview of my images there the content on the back so I can make sure that this is how I want it to look. And then here's where you have the insert button to put it into the content. So you need to click preview and then insert, or if you'd like to edit something, you can do preview back, but the preview button is the key to get it pushed into there. So I can click insert. And now I've got um, my flip cards right within there. So again, could add some more text around that if I wanted to. I can use my insert stuff if I have additional pieces to bring in. So you can still build this out like a regular piece of content. We're just doing just the flip card um, right there. All right. Um, are there any questions about flip, or, um, flip cards or elements before we take some time to go through them? Yeah, there were a couple questions. Um... Any idea if these would be available or accessible in the Pulse app? I can check on that. Let me, when we're doing some work time, I'll, I'll check on that one. And get <laughs> that, was, that was my response to it. I said, I'll, I'll okay. have to check on that one. Good question, but we'll have to check on that one. Um, and then we were wondering about GIFs. Instead of an hmm. image, would a GIF go into that space? I guess if you have it saved as a... Um, as a course file? Yeah. Maybe that, that might be a task when we're playing around with this. If someone wants to try that out, I've never put in GIFs. I've only ever done the images. So I'll look into the pulse piece. But if someone wants to try putting in a GIF, that would be Yeah, fun so to Laura, learn. if you have some GIFs and during our work time, if you could test that out, that'd be awesome. And um, adding math type or a type of equation editor into these items, um, I believe that would be possible um, with the editor as you're making it, correct? Yes, I think it would depend on what the item is there so like the the flip card that we were just looking at there um i'm just gonna go to creating another one just to show you so if it wants to load Yes, it's not like me right now, but yes, you should be able to. Um, you might not have, in some, in all parts, you might not have the Brightspace editor to get the full math elements there. Again, I was an English teacher, my math, my math lingo is not the best, but um, if you could, let's see. So in content, you can put whatever you would need to put into there. The only thing is that we don't have the Brightspace editor coming up with our option to insert the equations and that type of stuff. So um, this is just for flip cards. We would have to check for each of the elements here. Um, yeah, so and if you have the editor, you could add the math type. Yes, yeah. So if I go into timeline, for example, timeline, I get the editor. So you could do it with like a timeline, you get more options there. So I think it will depend on the element of whether you get the Brightspace editor or not. So as you're playing around with that, um, you'll and see in, which ones have them and which ones don't. In theory, I guess if you had an editor open in another tab and you did your uh, math yeah. type, you could probably you could copy and paste that into the flip card uh, yes. space. Yes. So I think yeah. that that could work. Um, we've had a few questions about copying. How easy is it to copy to other classes? I know you mentioned the beginning elements, and I know you're going to go over this, but you can you actually just copy the HTML source code. Um, just do a Control C and then a Control V in the other one, so that um, 
that's pretty easy. Practices is a little more involved. You do have to use the import export copy tool to pull it from one course to another. And with a practice, there's a one little extra step involved um, because a practice is more interactive and has a lot of moving parts. So you have to have a piece that makes those parts move. Um, yeah. So I know you're going to get into that a little bit later as well. Yeah, I could show the, since we're kind of wrapping up the elements part, I can show copying the elements and then go into our time and then I'll do the um, practices at a later point. But so if you did want to copy elements, what you would need to do is I'm in this element here. I'm going to go to edit, or if you already had it open, essentially you just need to open it to the point where you can see the source code. Um, so this will open for me here. And GIFs do work, by the way, everyone. So good news. Oh, awesome. That's great. Thanks. Um, and then the source code here, so you can click on this. Again, it looks more difficult, I mean, at least to me, than it actually is. All you're going to do is I do Control A, Control C. So you're just copying all of that. And then I'm going to go back out of here. Um, and I could go into a new course here. So I'm just going to actually I'll just do it in here. So I could go to Create New HTML Document. source code, get rid of that, and then put that in there. Um, and so then my text will come into there. And we did have a follow-up to that. So if there are images involved, then you would have to use import export copy, correct? Yes, yes. yes. Currently the images, um, import export copy would be the best way to do that right now. Just because you have to bring over the associated files, but that's just a checkbox when you're copying things over. Yeah. Awesome. Um, were there any other questions? Sorry, I'm not keeping up with the chat here. No, you're good. That that okay. was. I think that covered everything that we had questions on so far. Okay. Awesome. So I think we'll give some time now for everyone to work on elements. As you're doing this, if you have questions, please either just come off mute and ask or pop them into the chat. Um, try out different ones. I hope that you can build something that's usable for what you're working with. Um, and I'll stop my share here.
Darren, I just see a question. Um, any chance we could share the slides to help us practice? I know there was sep um, a certain folder set up for the slides, so I'm not sure how we're sharing those out, but I'll let you. Um, yeah, I can grab those. Awesome, thank you. I see another question of, can I create a stylized font in one of the stylized fonts? Do you mean, um, oh, I want the font to be pretty. Fair question. Okay, so let me um, take a look at that. Is there a, is it the stylized quote that you are um, looking at? Yeah, okay. Let me just take a look at that. I'm just going to play with that for one second. Okay, so it looks like right now um, the text in the stylized quote, you cannot change the font. It, it is going to be the default of what there is right now. But that's good feedback. I will provide that one to the team because it would be fun to have different kind of font there. Um, another question of to add images to my cards, do I have to have the image already saved? Yes, you do. So you can't add right from Google Images. If you have it saved within Brightspace, um, I believe you could grab. Let me just check on that one. Yeah, you should be able to upload it into your uh, course admin manage files area, and then it would be available for to use anywhere in your course. You could even create a folder in the manage files area for, you know, creator plus images or I think that would be another, Bridget, another nice feature of a lot of tools is adding images from the web, being able to just like search the web and just bring in images. Um, I think that's uh, like a nice feature that like in Google Slides, I think I, that a lot of people like. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we've heard that one before. So that one yeah. I know is probably talking. already a pie item. <laughs> no, that's good, though. Honestly, the more that we hear it, the more that I can say yep. people want this. So that's good. I have no issue with um, hearing it many times. <laughs> Also, I'm still, I'm just looking into the pulse um, question as well. So hoping to get an answer for that soon. Do you have to add like all in the flip cards, do I have to do all the cards at once and then put it in? Or, I mean, I can go back and edit and add items as I go. If I want to add more items to the same one, I just like go back and edit and then add item. Um, let me see. I don't, let's see if I go to, yes. So you can add one, go back and edit. So once you, if, if you insert it, you'll see, actually, I'll just share my screen for one second. Yeah, hold on. Let me look at your screen real quick. Okay, so I just inserted this one super quickly. I'll start a new one. So right, if, okay. I, if I did a flip card, um, I could, you know, add in something real. But then later, if I go to click on this, this little um, pencil button has the edit. Oh, when I, I click yeah. on it. So, yeah, I know. It's, you have to click right on it. It is a little hidden. Um, yeah. But then you can go through and edit that. Yeah. I was getting really frustrated. Just <laughs> yeah, yes. No, no, no. I should have known. Look for the pencil. Okay, yeah, thank no worries. Thank you so much for building in practice time because I really enjoy being able to do. That. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's one of those. This is one of those tools that there's so many different parts to it, and I would I would hate to spend so much time just showing off time timelines and whatever it might be, and it's not usable. So I'm glad that you enjoy the time. I think we'll probably take another two minutes, and then we'll do practices. 
and 55 minutes wouldn't even be enough time to get through every element in practice. Like if you wanted to show each one, there was, there's no way, there's so many. Um, currently the answer for the fancier fonts is sadly no right now, um, but I will take that feedback back. Uh, Ms. Tate, yes, uh, to answer your question, this is something that could be, I think, in the future looked at by curriculum writers to add to courses and have available in a, let's say, a master course or a template that teachers could then either have in their course or bring into their course. So I, I, I know some content offices, very few right now, are moving toward uh, building courses that teachers can pull from. Um, so I think that's uh, hopefully coming soon. Uh, just getting everybody on board. <laughs> you know how that goes. I don't think you can put these into the lore. Bridget, do you know? Elements um, and practices. I don't. I don't believe there's a published to the lore option for elements and practices. Um, no. But you, but you can publish an HTML doc to the lore. Yeah. So you could publish so, yeah. a piece of content, but just the specific. Like you couldn't take just the practice and publish that to the LOR. But I mean, you could make that the only thing in the piece of content, and then publish that to the to the LOR. And Tammy, I see your feedback. I will. Uh, I'll see if there's a. So Creator Plus is brand new, so I know they're mm -hmm. continuing to improve upon it uh, and make it, um, we'll say, better. Um, yes. We've already found a bunch of bugs that they fixed very quickly for us. So, um, yeah. Um, awesome. All right. I think just for the sake of time, uh, and as Darren mentioned, we would we could spend a lot of time playing with all of this, but I think we'll move on to the practices part of it, um, and I. Personally, I like the practices a lot. Um, so I'm going to go to sharing practices here. Alrighty. Um, so I'm just, again, similar to what we just did, I'll show quick examples, show how to create one. I'll show the copy process and then give you some time to do it on your own as well. So here are some examples of practices within um, Creator Plus. So this one is the sequencing example. So the students have to sequence the phases. So there's the text that they have here. It will, it's going to randomly be in different spots. So students will have to drag and drop to where it should be. And I do just want to call out that if you have students who do use a screen reader, this keyboard button will allow this to read the text out loud to them. So if you have students who do need to um, use an assistive device, Make sure you put the alternate text on the image so that it can read through everything for them. Um, and if I wanted to drag things around, I can see that there's multiple sides to this, so I can bring this to where it needs to be. And then if I check my answers, oh, zero out of six. Again, science was not my strong suit, but students could try again if they need to. And again, just practice right within this piece of content there. One thing that I want to call out just as we're going through this is I know I'm showing elements and practices separately right now. You can build them both in together into a lesson. So you could have elements with practices, with texts. They do not need to be standalone um, items. This is one for food groups. So um, I can see I've got my dairy and bring in my different pieces here. To going to go over here. I can bring in my and drag and sort my items. And then awesome. So then I can check my answers. And you can see that there's additional text that will come up for students. So you can add in feedback right within there. So some additional context of 
um, why this might be the way that it is or um, some explanation of it. Students can see exactly how many they got correct for that item. And you can also add overall feedback to the entire activity. So you could um, have that show up for them there. And, and again, if I show this um, sortable one, this one is chicken breeds, which again is not, I'm not well versed in my chicken breeds, but if I could drag these into different spots here and just drag and drop as needed, can move them around if I think that that one actually should go there. Students can see how many sortable items they should have in there. So if they add too many, they can see that they have four out of three. There's only um, meant to be three there. So I can check my answers again and could try again if needed. And then the last one I'll show here is just this sequencing of cat um, lifespan. So I can drag these around for students to get the um, cat lifespan and then can see how they're doing there. Again, just to reiterate, this does not connect to grades. Um, so this is not the quiz tool. This is just practices for students to try their work out as they're going through this. So if you are looking for something that connects to a grade, use the quiz tool for that. This is just meant for students to be able to see how they're doing and practice um, themselves. I will show an example of creating one of these. So again, just like we did with our elements, I'll go to HTML document and create one of those. I'm again gonna to go to insert other options and this time I'm gonna select insert practice. I am going to select the drop down fill in the blanks because I find this one had the biggest learning curve for me. So I'm gonna demonstrate this one. Please feel free when you're playing with this to do whatever one um, works best for you. You will notice that the creation process looks very similar to the, the quiz creation process um, here. So we can see a preview of what students will see. I can um, add in my title here. So I'm just gonna, uh, sticking with our frog theme, could add a short description if I would like to, instructions for my students if I would like to. Um, and then here is where I'm actually gonna add in the text of what this will be. So. You can see that the instructions say to add root question text, create a blank, type in any word and a number um, with the square brackets and select update blanks. So what that means is I'm just going to say a, and then whatever I would like to be in the blank, I put in two square brackets is a, and I could do this and update my blanks or I could write my entire text, come back and do this as I need to. It grows um, again. So I could I could build this out. Essentially, whatever is in a square bracket will be a blank. So then when I go to update blanks, I can see this over here. But you'll notice that it does not automatically um, grab what is inside of that text. The, the square brackets really just identifies that there should be a blank there. So here what we need to do is we'll see our word tadpole. I'm going to put that the correct answer is tadpole. The incorrect answer in this case, I'm going to make the other things that pop up. So frog grows. And this is the drop down fill in the blank option. There is a fill in the blank where students just type their text. I just wanted to show this one because it's a little bit um, bigger. So here again, I can write my correct answer is frog. Incorrect answers in this case are the other items that students um, would have to choose from. And the reason that there's multiple incorrect and correct answers is because there could be blanks that have multiple um, answers that could be. So although fraud might be the correct answer, it's not necessarily incorrect if they put in a different answer there. So want to give options for all of that. Tadpole and frog. Okay. Um, and then you can down here see how this will be scored. So all or nothing, correct inputs or right minus wrong inputs up to you how you'd like to do that. And again, we have our little question mark if you are going through this and you're not sure which one works best for you. I can see um, the preview of what this will look like for my students and I can I can play around with this. So I can do a frog is a baby or a tadpole is a baby frog. It grows and then I can check my answer and see how I've done there. In this case, this is where elements is different than practices is before with our elements, I needed to select preview and then I had the option to insert. This preview is, is genuinely just a preview for you to play with there. Um, to insert it here, 
the insert button is at the bottom of our um, work there. And then it tells me I can save my, I can close that. And now I've got my frog life cycle. It will take a second to get together there. And again, um, just like before, you can edit if you need to, if you click on the item. And then if I go to save and close here. Hey, Bridget. Yeah. This would be a good place to answer a question that popped up. I think uh, you, you mentioned how you can use an element and a practice in the same HTML mm. document. So I think um, someone wanted us to repeat that. So in a, in a one HTML doc, you can use three elements and two practices or, and, and put in a video and put in text and put in images. So this HTML document can be very robust and have all kinds of stuff going on in it all at once. Yes, yeah, that's a good call out. And actually I might, um, we don't need to spend a ton of time on it, but just so that you can see an example of this, this recording that I had done, again, this is in the slide deck for you to watch later, but this is a good example of that and it being quite built out. So this is a chemistry one that somebody had put together. They have like a learning box at the top for their learning outcomes, a text, some images there, some additional text. It's a slower video, I'm just gonna speed it up. Um, a call out box there. Again, some more images. So this one's quite a built out lesson. Um, we've got our element here so they can click on this and reveal the text there as students work through. Some more images. We've got the flip card example here as well. So again, all of this is in the same lesson. This one's quite long because it's just to show all of what you could do. Um, but you can have as many or as little as you would like in here. And we've got some YouTube videos right within there as well. And then a practice exercise at the end of a sortable item. So just to kind of show that example, this recording is in the slide deck that will, has been shared out. Um, but just in case you wanted to, to see it now, to see it kind of in action, that's what that could look like. Um, awesome. Okay, and then for students, this is what will it will look like in here. Again, if I had a more built out with it, the entire content would show, but I can go through and put my answers in and check my answers and see how I've done and try again if I need to. All right, um, so are there any questions about, oh, I see Leslie has raised a hand. Uh, yeah, um, when you were clicking those little drop down menu boxes in the answers. I only saw one option. Is that right? Was there a list? How does it look to the student? Is it, are they going to see oh. three, three options or are they going to just? Oh, sorry. I'm seeing my screen is not. Okay. One second. Let me reshare my screen. I, I'm typically a Zoom user. So this Google Meet is, I'm just going to reshare my screen because the options are not showing up. I see if I go to my entire screen. Let's see if this is any better here. Okay, there we go. Um, sorry about that. I guess I was just showing the one window and not the entire screen there. So Thanks. this has all of the options for them there. Um, awesome. Any other questions just before we take some time? Uh, let me make sure I answer this question. A call out box. That's just really just a one cell table that you highlight the box, highlight it green or blue just to call it out, correct? Yes. Yeah. That's special. part of if you were using templates, they have call out boxes in them. Sorry. Yep. Um, yes. So that's just part of that there that somebody had baked into that lesson. And then we just had uh, Mr. Vigna, he just let us know that he has definitely used elements and practices um, combined in the same HTML with no problems so far. Oh, awesome. That's great. Um, can you click on an image to pull up the image to the text? Um, I'm not sure if you mean, do you mean in a, let's see. If the text in the image is small. Oh, I see. If you like had the picture in there and had it expand, is that the, um, is that what you mean? Yeah. Um, not right now. You can resize the image to be the size that you would like it to be within the content. So you could make it bigger, but you can't expand it um, currently. 
Uh, Bridget, can you sh go uh, create a new HTML and just show yeah. where a, someone could select a template versus, oh, yes. yeah. um, we just wanted to elaborate on template. Yeah, definitely. Um, so a template is, I mean, as the name suggests, it just gives you a bit of a starting point to work from if you haven't done so, if you haven't used these yet. So you can see the ones that are built in right here. Um, if I went to this intro one, for example, it's going to insert an image. I could change what this image is, or I can delete the image altogether if I would like to. Um, it has the course title. It will put the AACPS logo at the bottom there automatically for me, and I can start to build some stuff out within here. So if I wanted to, I'm just going to show a different template as well. And you can only use one template at a time, yeah. but you could add elements and practices to a template. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So this one, for example, this is a module introduction one. It has learning objectives kind of blocked out there. But as Darren mentioned, if I wanted to, oops, I'm um, just going to, I could insert an element. Um, oops, let me go down there. And I know there are certain elements or certain um, places you couldn't use it. How did I get there? Yeah, sorry, no worries. I will go back to there. Uh, and Darren, I'm not sure this might be something for you. Are they, does every course already have the templates as an yes, option within them? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's shared across the district. Um, it's yeah, right above the the editing so, window. Yeah, so create a new down. HTML document. Um, and then it's this select template button here. And we have and created we, some custom templates just for ACPS, the general one, and then for asynchronous and synchronous um, instruction just to get you started. And that's, uh, those are explained on our website. Awesome. Um, all right, so I think we can take some time to practice practices a little bit. Again, if you have any questions as you're working through this, please let um, us know. And I'm getting an answer to the Pulse one, and then I promise I'll have that before the end of our session. So um, I will stop my share. And have fun. Please let us know if you have any questions. OK, so I do have an answer um, about the pulse. So C plus elements and practices are mobile friendly. They're designed to work on all devices so students can access them via Pulse and then interact with them in their mobile browser. So I imagine they'll click on them in Pulse and then it will take them to their mobile browser, but they should have no issues interacting with them there. Uh, Sarah, you would not be able to see what students are doing in the elements and practice unless you were looking at their screen. There is no live look in at what they're doing at this time. I have heard rumors, or not rumors, but I th they are going to go toward making some of these uh, ha like track to data or be able to, to connect to your grade book. Um, I've also heard hotspots are coming as well. I know that's a, a one they want to put in, so that'll be cool. Yeah, I think as Darren mentioned earlier, Creator Plus is fairly new, like it was just launched the, in this past fall, which um, so any feedback is helpful to hear as well. So this is all stuff that I will take back as of right now. You can't see what students have done, um, but I would not be surprised if that comes later. Uh, Leslie. Yeah, thanks. Um, the sequencing feature, um, I noticed that you had you know, two blocks, you, you have a, like a row of stationary items and then you're dragging and sequencing the items below those. But I would like to mimic 
what I see in like our standardized testing where they just have a row of blocks that you organize, a single row. Is that doable? Let me, I will share my screen and we can go through that. Let's see. And Bridget, while you're setting that up, I just want to let everyone know we have five minutes left. I placed the mandatory session attendance and feedback link form or form link in the chat. So just um, please make sure you fill that out so you get credit for being here. Okay, so I wonder if I, oh no, it does want me to have the step. Okay, so I could just have Yeah, it looks like it it wants me to have both rows. So I don't see why I couldn't. Let's see if I if I try to trick it and just do like a space in there. Um, okay, so I don't see why you couldn't do that if this meets what you're looking for, Leslie. It's just it needs to have text in the first row. I just did a space and then it just numbered the top there. And then I can put in my items along yep. there. So if you're looking for it to be Good. just smaller down there. Okay, I like that. All right. Yeah, thanks. No worries. Thank you. Um, and just knowing that we're nearing the end of our time, I just do want to share as well. Um, some resources at the end of the slide deck here. So if you are looking for additional resources, there's some that have been created by Darren and team as well as some um, Brightspace ones. And then I also have, again, I screenshotted practices and elements as well as some template stuff. So you can take a look at how this works if you are going through this later and you forget the clicks that I had done. So those are all there for you. Is there like a specific training video or something of that nature that would show how to copy or export, the, you know, these elements and things like that to another class? Because that's the, that's where the buy-in element at our school I'm at, uh, is like, that's where it's going to meet uh, me kind of a, you know, hesitation is that I created it for this one class and then it wasn't easy to get it to the other class and now I'm wasting my time. Um, and I, I even as the e-coach sometimes struggle with this. So I was, I mean, I know that's not your training for this session. I could probably just use this training session for just copying, importing, exporting yeah. content. But um, is there a resource you could show me that shows specifically elements or things that are not copy and text source code yes so like using the import export copies that yeah um, yeah um so i don't i know darren's running a session later all about copying <laughs> i just um, put a link in the chat so oh yeah we do, yeah, have, oh, we do yes. have a dedicated document just for copying html but it's, okay. it is essentially a content a piece of content so it's copied the okay. same way you'd copy a piece of content from one course to another, we're using import uh -huh. export copy. Just note that if it's a practice, there is one extra step. You there's a what's called a dot json file that essentially makes it all work. Like it, okay. you know, when you drag and drop it, that's how it the it knows that you dropped it in the correct spot. And when you check okay. your answer, it do the check mark. So those directions mm -hmm. are in that document that I just okay. shared. Did you say you're doing a session later? That's all so I'm, I'm doing a session at session three, I think, or I don't know, four uh, toward the end of the day. It's called copy, copy, copy. So we're just talking about all the different ways to copy. Uh, Jerry and I will be there. <laughs> so it's probably a lot of stuff you already know, but maybe I'll give uh, you something new. I, can, I, I hope. use a refresher and I know that that's been like the biggest roadblock. For, it is. It is. For yes. us at the high schools. Okay. Um, sometimes I think the answer is just merging too. <laughs> sure. And managing less fewer courses so um so uh we are up against our time at one minute i just want to make sure i put this in the chat one more time so everybody is gets credit for being here and i'm gonna awesome thank you again i just want to thank everybody very much for taking the time today to learn about all of this and i know it might be new to you might be something you've done before but i i really do appreciate your time so thank mm -hmm. you so much have a great rest of your e-coach day all right.